approximately 50 miles, 80 kilometers, off the coast of Aomori in northeastern Japan, hidden beneath the depths of the Pacific Ocean, one of the most dangerous and fascinating seismic regions on the planet has just awakened with a violence that sent shockwaves far beyond its waters. On the night of December 8th, 2025 at 11.15 p.m. local time, an earthquake of magnitude 7.5 to 7.6 shook the ocean floor at a depth of approximately 31 miles, 50 kilometers, triggering tsunami alerts and forcing the evacuation of more than 30,000 people. This event, recorded with a seismic intensity of 6 upper on the Japanese Shindo scale, was strong enough to make it impossible to stand or move without crawling in the most affected areas. But this earthquake in Japan was not an isolated event in the turbulent month of December. Just two days earlier, on December 6th, a remote region on the border between Alaska and the Canadian territory of Yukon was shaken by a powerful earthquake of magnitude 7.0, the strongest recorded on Canadian soil in 79 years. The epicenter was located approximately 154 miles, 248 kilometers, west of Whitehorse, capital of Yukon, in a highly active seismic zone where the Pacific Plate moves against the North American Plate along the Queen Charlotte Fairweather Fault System. More than 33 aftershocks were recorded in the first three hours after the main shock, with the largest reaching magnitude 5.1. These two massive seismic events, separated by thousands of miles but occurring just 48 hours apart, reignited a scientific debate that gained new urgency in October 2025. That month, researchers from Oregon State University published a groundbreaking discovery in the journal Geosphere that could completely redefine our understanding of seismic risk on the west coast of North America. The team led by marine geologist Dr. Chris Goldfinger discovered compelling geological evidence that two of the continent's most dangerous faults, the Cascadia subduction zone and the San Andreas Fault, may be synchronized. With earthquakes in one system potentially triggering seismic events in the other, the North Pacific region is known as the Ring of Fire an arc of intense seismic and volcanic activity that circles the Pacific Ocean, where several tectonic plates converge, subduct, and slide over one another. This zone is home to approximately 90% of all the world's earthquakes and 75% of all the planet's active volcanoes. The Japanese earthquake occurred in the same region devastated by the 2011 Tohoku earthquake, a catastrophic magnitude 9.0 tremor that triggered a tsunami with waves up to 33 feet 10 meters high, and caused the Fukushima nuclear disaster, resulting in nearly 20,000 lives lost. The connection between these recent events and the discovery about Cascadia and San Andreas suggests that the Ring of Fire may be even more interconnected than scientists previously imagined. The earthquake that struck northeastern Japan on the night of Monday, December 8th, was felt over an extraordinarily wide area, with perceptible tremors reaching as far as Tokyo, more than 398 miles, 640 kilometers from the epicenter. The Japan Meteorological Agency initially issued tsunami warnings predicting waves up to 10 feet, 3 meters high, for the coasts of Hokkaido, Aomori, and Iwate prefectures. Although the actual waves were smaller than feared, with the highest tsunami measuring 28 inches, 70 centimeters, at Kuji Port in Iwate, the event triggered something unprecedented in Japanese seismic history, the first Hokkaido and Sanriku offshore earthquake alert, which warns of an increased probability of an even larger earthquake in the coming days. This special warning system was developed after lessons learned from the 2011 disaster when a magnitude 7.2 earthquake occurred two days before the magnitude 9.0 megaquake. The Japan Meteorological Agency now calculates that the chance of a magnitude 8 or greater earthquake increased from 0.1% per week to 1% per week after the December 8th event. At least 23 to 33 people were injured, most struck by falling objects, and structural damage was reported in several cities, including Hachinohe, where a restaurant was damaged, glass shattered, and cracks in the ground were observed. The International Atomic Energy Agency confirmed there were no abnormalities at Japan's nuclear facilities, including the Fukushima Daiichi plant, where the discharge of treated radioactive water was temporarily suspended as a precaution. While Japan was still processing the shock of its earthquake, scientists in Canada and the United States were analyzing the implications of the powerful magnitude 7.0 tremor that struck the Yukon region two days earlier. This earthquake, which occurred at 1.41 p.m. local time on December 6th, had its epicenter approximately 35 miles, 
56 kilometers, north of Yakutat, Alaska, and about 154 miles west of Whitehorse. The tremor occurred at a relatively shallow depth of approximately 6.2 miles, 10 kilometers, which intensified the ground motion felt by residents over a vast area. Whitehorse residents reported that the shaking lasted between 30 seconds and 2 minutes, with trees swaying violently, snow falling from branches, and objects on shelves shaking intensely. Professor Edwin Nissen from the University of Victoria explained that earthquakes were recorded in the same area in 1899, 1979, 2002, and 2017, demonstrating that this is a historically active seismic zone. Fortunately, there were no immediate reports of serious structural damage or injuries, largely due to the remote and sparsely populated nature of the region. However, the South Klondike Highway was preventively closed from kilometer 24 to kilometer 106 due to increased avalanche conditions triggered by the earthquake. Yukon Energy and RCMP authorities inspected facilities and critical infrastructure in the hours following the event, while more than 128 aftershocks continued to shake the region in subsequent days, keeping residents on high alert. In October 2025, while the scientific community continued monitoring seismic activity around the Ring of Fire, a team of researchers from Oregon State University published findings that fundamentally transformed our understanding of seismic risks on the North American West Coast. The study, led by marine geologist Dr. Chris Goldfinger and published in the prestigious journal Geosphere, revealed compelling evidence that the Cascadia subduction zone which extends from Vancouver Island to Northern California, and the San Andreas Fault, which runs 750 miles, 1,207 kilometers, along California, may be synchronized. Analysis of seafloor sediment cores representing 3,100 years of geological history showed that earthquakes in one system often occurred in close temporal succession, with events in the other system, sometimes just minutes or hours apart. The discovery originated accidentally during an ocean research cruise in 1999, when Goldfinger's team was collecting sediment cores in the Cascadia subduction zone off the coast of Oregon and Northern California. An undergraduate student accidentally entered an incorrect latitude into the navigation system, sending the ship approximately 56 miles, 90 kilometers, south of the intended location, beyond the Cascadia margin and into San Andreas Fault territory near Cape Mendocino. Deciding to take advantage of the error, the team collected a core in that area, and subsequent analyses revealed a unique and intriguing structure. Turbidites, deposits from underwater landslides frequently triggered by earthquakes, typically present a layered pattern with coarser sediment at the bottom and fine grains at the top. However, this core showed the opposite pattern in several layers, coarse, sandy sediment at the top and fine, silty sediment at the bottom. This inverted layering formation, which researchers called doublets, could only be explained by a specific sequence of events. The fine lower layer was caused by a major earthquake in the Cascadia subduction zone, while the coarser sediment on top was deposited by subsequent movement on the nearby San Andreas Fault. The team then used radiocarbon dating to analyze the turbidite layers from this core and others collected north and south of Cape Mendocino, the point where the two faults converge. Of 18 Cascadia events and 19 San Andreas events identified over the past 3,000 years, 10 appeared to have occurred almost simultaneously, with their ages differing by only a few decades, well within the margin of uncertainty of the dating. Even more impressive, researchers identified three cases in the last 1,500 years, including the most recent in 1700, when they believe ruptures on both faults occurred just minutes to hours apart. Share this video with friends and family so more people understand the real seismic risks we face and the importance of disaster preparedness. Science cannot predict exactly when the earth will shake, but it can give us the tools and knowledge necessary to protect lives when the inevitable finally occurs.